Welcome to the Photo Brigade podcast. I am Robert Kaplan, and I have Gary He next to me taking my pictures uh, with his fancy camera. Um, Gary, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Welcome to the Photo Brigade podcast. I'm finally glad we got you to, to make an appearance. Well, I have something to sell, kind of, not really. So you finally got <laughs> me much, on board. How much is going to be? Well, cheap. Very, cheap. Very First cheap. of all, I think that we should <coughs> mention that you wore a bow tie, and you have a, what do you call this? Uh, handkerchief. Handkerchief. Pocket that's, that's it. Yep. Handkerchief. Is this in case I cry or need to sneeze or have a runny nose? No, it's if I cry. Okay. Well. Am I close enough to this thing? Should you I? you yeah. are. You're you're perfect. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Great. But you can pretend it's not there also. Okay. Well, <laughs> so uh, Gary and I. Uh, well, first of all, thank you Adorama, their event space, for letting us do uh, host our event here. Check us out at photobrigade.com/live, and thanks to Canon Professional Services for your support. Um, so Gary and I, we met. You and I met in Times Square in 2005. Yeah, it's, Do you uh, remember that? Yes. It's actually, um, was it the first day of your internship at the New York it, Times? It very well could have been, yeah. I think it was. Um, I was like familiar with you uh, and your work uh, before then, but I believe it was the day that uh, Michael Jackson got <laughs> acquitted. <laughs> That's right. We and had to go take pictures of the, bill, the billboards. Right, the exactly. And then reaction. there's like that one guy who was uh, doing the thriller dance or what have you, so. Right. Yeah, that, that was fun. And so you were interning at, at the time for the, the Sun, the New York Sun, was Right, it? yeah. The Which New is no Sun. more. Um, they have sadly folded. They felt, the, yeah. Yeah. How was that? I mean, not how, how did they fold, but how was that internship? Was that, did you do a series of internships or was that your first internship and? No, actually, um, they brought me on to edit photographs and the first day they needed someone to shoot and I went out and shot and then they were like, oh, your stuff is in focus, so we're gonna let you shoot more stuff. Um, and we, it became a shooting internship, really. Cool. Um, and they I, they started paying me at roughly, you know, what an intern should be paid. Right. Um, and it roughly, was, yeah. What should an in intern be paid? I wonder. Um, I don't know. It was. Uh, I think they paid me something like hundred, hundred twenty dollars per assignment or something something oh, okay. something like that it was not it was not bad for like you know an, a 20 year old right at the time uh, a lot of internships i bet don't pay anything right yeah. the times is uh, a, a rare exception because they they actually, actually paid well for paid the intern i well. remember being really surprised and like actually being able to afford rent and you know not i wouldn't be able to afford rent anymore on right. that, that salary but um yeah they paid none of us can afford rent none right of us now. can afford especially if you're in the <laughs> journalism world because uh there's not so much money in the journalism world anymore it, and there never really was well i guess there was at the beginning okay so when we first met we both went freelance pretty quickly after you went freelance right afterwards didn't you uh i've never had a uh, full-time job you've never had a full-time job never so, yeah. So the answer is yes. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, and uh, I remember when we first started freelancing, um, we were, I w at least I was, I don't know about you, but we were able to like do one assignment for the Times, one assignment for Bloomberg, one assignment, like I was able to, to break it up and there used to be actually demand for, for photography. And then, then everything just went downhill in a hurry. Like no more, no more. Uh, first of all, most of the, the publications were saying, hey, you can only work for us for the full day. You can't you can't pick and choose. You can't do just one assignment. Now now the the, the day rate is for the whole day. It's not for just the the one assignment and so on. Well, I th I feel like the Times was always uh, much more flexible about this. I think you came from that world, whereas um, like the Daily News and the Post kind of expected you to be on for an entire shift, right? Which would have been in like eight or ten hours or really however long they needed you for, right? Um, I remember getting into trouble once or twice because I would try to do that, like um, go on an assignment for the Daily News and then like the AP would call. Uh -huh. like, all right, yeah, another couple hundred bucks. Like, yeah, I'll, ta I'll take it, yeah. right? And then all of a sudden the Daily News would call in the middle of that AP assignment and say like, hey, where are you? Like someone's jumping off a building. <laughs> and you, you go, oh man. I just covered like, it for AP. You, yeah. can, you, can, get, <laughs> exactly, you can get it over yeah. here. You can find it on the wire, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so Gary is probably one of the first, well, you are probably the first podcast guest of mine who came without any photos no photographs no photographs i don't have an organized uh collection of photographs for this, this purpose and and because of that we are using going to be using your instagram so i am just going to uh throw up your instagram feed so that people can see that you actually are a legitimate photographer that you take pretty photos and it's more than just this stylish witty guy that has a new app 
okay? Right. So anyhow, Gary He, uh, it's Instagram.com slash Gary He if you want to follow, follow him. Um, and he takes some beautiful images. Like, for instance, look at this photo through a fence of the Empire State Building. How great. How great is that? <laughs> I don't want to pigeonhole you into this particular type of photography. I'm a, I'm a fence photographer. A fence photographer, not yeah. fencing, but fence. Um, and you just recently covered um, the Hillary Clinton um, big announcement, or how she claimed the victory. Or yeah, basically. no, that was uh, that was a very interesting night because uh, you know every like every single person in New York who covers this kind of stuff was there because right. they all knew that that was happening. Right. And but you know to tie in the whole like um, live uh, or real time photography stuff, um, you know the the lines were actually choked. Like the, you, no one could get photos out. Oh, like, really? Yeah. Um, and I don't think anyone was actually wired in to like an Ethernet signal. And so like you, you were able to get like maybe one or two images out um, while the stuff was going on. And then a lot of people sort of got photos out like afterward. Right. You know? So so basically what Gary's talking about, for those of you that don't know, not everyone's, you know, photojournalists don't know the, the whole thing. But when we're covering a news event like Hillary Clinton announcing that she's basically taken the Democratic whatever you call it, um, you need to get the photos out to your publications immediately. Right. We were talking about this a little bit with Stan mm -hmm. in our previous podcast. Um, and the problem, there are different problems that arise, and you mentioned this one was that you just couldn't get anything out because they were all clogged. Right. I mean, yeah, because you have like a couple hundred, if not several thousand people there with cell phones. And so, I mean, generally photojournalists um, work with like hotspots. Um, and so when you have that many people um, sort of like uploading Instagram, Snapchats, or whatever, it gets really mm -hmm. choked up, right? Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, how they solve it at like the conventions or like at sporting events, major sporting events, is that um, like what Stan was saying, they uh, Ethernet, they run the line directly into these pro cameras like a D5 or uh, 1DXs. They wire whatever. them like directly to the person's computer. Yeah, or to like a server uh -huh. or whatever. And then, um, I mean, because they already have editors sitting there, right? Uh -huh. um, so that system is very efficient. Um, I mean, you kind of need a wireless system if you like your person, or you need to send it into the cloud if your person is not sitting right. on site editing with you. Right. Right. And so this is this is kind of leading us into what you're doing these days, which is you've you've created an app called the Distribute app, and we'll pull up the website here. But um, give us a little background of. You know how you started this, the the sort of path, and and I'm sure it's complex to build a build an app. It's not really a, that hard. <laughs> no, gosh. My developer or one uh, the developer I work with is probably watching this right now, like going ah, <laughs> it's uh it, it's it's difficult to. I mean it, it, yeah, it, it is kind of difficult to um to build out something, which is why no one has really done it. Because it, but it's um at the core, it's very simple, right? So. What I, what I did after my photojournalism career is I started working with brands, um, photographing like events, like if you, know, you need a Charmin bear walking down Times Square, they need photographs, like professional photographs of it shot in a um, reportage or photojournalistic style uh -huh. so that newspapers will run it. And so then they can claim that they have uh, however many impressions, like or organic or news impressions um, for their um, act activation. Um, so, but I, I, I noticed uh, over the years, I mean, especially with uh, social media getting more and more important, um, they would have like a kid standing there with like a cell phone camera or a cell phone, you know, photographing it and then sending it up to social media because photographers generally like regular photographers do not have the means to access the photos on their cameras right away. Right. Right. So well, I mean, that after and we're event, shooting the whole time. You right. Know, exactly. We're busy ca trying to capture rather than trying to, you know. Right. So, um, so, so with live or real-time photography, there, there's always been like two ways of doing it, right? You have the wire service way uh, for these major events, which is you know requires tens of thousands of dollars, and you like wire up a bunch of cameras, and you have an editor sitting there, and like localized servers like sitting in the room, and you know the photos flow really fast, like the Oscars, for example. Like New York Times did an, um, a blog piece on their Lens blog about this, how. They have like a team, like a crack team of like 12 editors sitting back in New York waiting for photographs to flow in from four photographers who are like wired up or they're using Josh Hainer's uh, backpack, yeah. you know, which almost set someone on fire. 
<laughs> really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Hadn't during, heard that story. During the Super Bowl. Yeah, someone told me about this. Uh, it was funny. Um, they're fine. Um, <laughs> anyway. That's uh, good to hear. <laughs> yeah. R- this, all this technology is extremely reliable, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Not experimental at all. Um, uh, anyway, so, but, you know, that costs a lot of money and it requires a lot of personnel, right? And then there's the other way, which, um, to your point um, about, you know, you're photographing and not really wanting to, th- like, twiddle on a device is you have these cameras coming out now. Like, they're kind of like uh, consumer cameras, but some of them are uh, prosumer as well uh, from, acro- from all the companies where uh, the camera creates kind of like an ad hoc wireless network and your phone or your uh, tablet can sort of connect to the camera and then you can view the pictures on, like that way. Right. Right. And the problem with that is you're shooting, right? You don't, you really shouldn't be pulling up your phone, pulling up your phone and like trying to figure out like, oh yeah, I want to send this photo to the client or that photo to the client. Like you, you should be able to do it in camera. Right. right? And so uh, I kind of decided, oh, well, these cameras already have Wi-Fi capabilities. Why don't you just send the selects up into the cloud and then have a piece of software sort of edit everything and uh, apply uh, watermarks or watermarks like caption or information or whatever, all automated um, by like the cloud and and then you know present it all in a very clean page that allows clients to sort of just download the stuff and also I mean y- you can route it to like a Dropbox or whatever so a guy sitting in like Minnesota you know can, can grab it can grab it like so, right away. So to your point, while while we did the introduction, you were snapping away as people heard and saw, um, and you can see here that you had your camera connected to my Dropbox, essentially. Yeah, I, I, it account. was connected to my software. To your software. And the software, so this is not even your Dropbox. This is the front-facing uh, page that you can just send anyone um, to download stuff. Um, and this and is scary. This is what into, it's like to be a If you go into me, okay. your Dropbox, uh, it already populated out. Okay. So this is, this so is this the is photo is mechanic. This is photo mechanic pulling up your Dropbox. And so all of that is popping up right away. Um, and of course, the the server, the the cloud is also dropping in a watermark, you know, just in case you needed uh, more branding um, right. when you're using it on social or uh, what have you. And of course, it also has a copy of it without the watermark. Cool. So yeah, multi-usage, you can kind of configure it to do whatever the heck you want. And this is th- and this is one of those things where it's like when you're connected to it, you're sending your photos like raw out of the camera for the most. Well, I guess you're saying that you can have particular filters applied so you can have like a an auto tone or, or something as well yeah i mean that we, we haven't made that public yet but that is that like we have it no we have it it's po- yeah, i mean i'm not even going to pretend like it's not going to happen like it's it's uh it's one of those things that uh you, you we're going to press the button and then one day it's going right. to be up there but um because we're kind of just introducing it to people right now um and we've kind of uh this i mean you we know we can charge money for or uh, charge clients uh for like real time, like high res uh, um, and high quality photographs. So I mean, you might as well give that to people first. Let them figure out how much uh, or like what usage they can get out of that, and then they uh, we can right. give them more features and see what they can do with that. Okay, so yeah. um, so what's the big plan then? I mean, like how you're you okay? First of all, let's back up a minute. Sure. You mentioned back in my journalism days, or you said back when you were a photojournalist. So you don't consider yourself a photojournalist anymore? Um, what did Steve McCurry say? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a visual visual storyteller. <laughs> visual storyteller. Right. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's, that, I mean, that's what it is. I mean, you, I mean, you, you, you have, uh, I mean, we have these uh, photojournalism abilities, these visual storytelling abilities, but um, when you, when you do it for like a brand or for a company, I mean, a, the, you can pay the bills a lot better because they have a lot more money than a lot of these newspapers. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, and B, sometimes you have to like set stuff up, you know? Sometimes you got to Photoshop out part of someone's face. Right. Um, you know, um, so, you know, I, I, don't con- I don't consider that photojournalism, even sure. though like you're capturing of all that stuff. And like, in essence, you are, you are still trying to perform as close as possible to photojournalistic standards if you look at the entire body of work that i produced uh over the past couple of years i mean a lot of that stuff i mean i would not consider photojournalism right yeah. right so um are you is is the plan then to sell this technology like to make a buck from it like how like i mean i just kind of want to put it in the hands of photographers um i i, I want to see what they can do with it i mean they 
um, whenever we've talked to people about it, the um, people have always gotten very excited um, because there is this demand, right? They, they, photographers are losing ground to um, cell phones um, and uh, like smaller cameras that are uh, wirelessly connected right. to uh, cell phones. So like, it, I mean, it doesn't, and you know how quickly people consume content nowadays and how quickly they demand it you know right. i mean you guys are streaming this thing live sure you know i mean there's uh, if you had hired a photographer like generally speaking you would get the photos about an hour or two after this thing was over and that's if like they were pretty fast at editing right you know now uh our professional photographs are coming out at the same speed as it's interesting it's like I, i'm starting feed. to think of like oh i could potentially you know a lot of when i work for corporate clients or whoever um I'll have this whole editing process and I want to make sure that of course the best work is out there and everything. But if I could, if I could shoot an event say, and just have it feeding to them and then not even have to touch them, Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty amazing. And it's in it's a hell of a, um, value to the client as well. Right. Because they are thinking in terms of like, Oh, how do we engage people like while they're following this event? Like, let's say, uh, like the Met Gala, I guess, would, would be a good example. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, they, they do amazing work. I mean, it's an amazing event. But tweeting from, I mean, the live tweet from the Met account was a cell phone. Mm-hmm. Like, it was all cell phone photographs. Meanwhile, they have hired photographers, like, generating amazing photographs, um, well-lit, well-composed photographs, you know, from the carpet. There's no reason why um, those photographs can't hit. Uh, intermediary for social media social media team to sort of pull that and sort of live tweet about like oh Taylor Swift's like awesome dress or right what have you right you know. so let's jump in a little bit into social media as you as you saw we were going through some of your or as you know we were going through some of your uh, Instagram work but one of the places that I've been enjoying following you these days is snapchat oh boy how do we feel about snapchat <sighs> and just it just social media in general I mean it's uh, everyone uses it for different purposes but and you use snapchat to kind of show yourself jogging and eating food and eating oreos and what have you but oreos are food oreos are food <laughs> not those red velvet ones that you eat though no, those are delicious <laughs> um i mean I, uh, snapchat is just like another way to tell stories right i mean you you have to tell it completely differently um i we actually did a poll of um a lot of like marketing people uh, media people and they actually i mean they, they don't believe that like a uh, uh, a Facebook Live or a Snapchat will replace, um, like you know, professional photography, uh-huh. right? Like the stills. There's, they say that it's uh, very likely that it may phase out, like a, a videographer, a professional videographer. Like I think that's what um, that's a segment that um, has to worry, right? But in terms of like professional photographs, I mean, we, the professional photographers, like still photographers, have taken like the nosedive for the past like 15 years. I don't think a lot of this. Uh, new stuff really affects um, still photographers as much as like the video people. I think, think it's it like videos turn to get hit because a lot of this new technology um, allows you to create like really high quality video content like on the cheap like you know like there's like um, the Osmo right DJI who does like the, f- uh, the Phantom drones um, they uh, they do this thing called the Osmo, which is like a stabilized uh, stabilized uh, video camera shooting at 4K. You know, back in the day, you would have to hire like a steady cam operator. You know, have this giant rig, whatever. They cost you thousands of dollars. Now you can do it for like 500 bucks. So like I think video um, and it feeds directly into Facebook Live, right? So I think video is uh, the segment of the industry that really has to start looking at um, how to adapt to uh, the speed. Um, and the social media stuff that uh, that's coming out right now. How how have you used? I, I, have you used social media at all to, um, to to make money? Like, has have you ever been hired to you to sure, yeah. shoot for social or and how's yeah. that worked for you? Or I uh, mean, what, what, give me some details about that because everyone has different deals. You know, the magazines hire them for a day to cover an event. Right. Or um, I just what? I just saw a friend doing Snapchat for the. Uh, the the golf U.S. Open golf that's going on right now, and he was hired for just all these days to go and just Snapchat himself. Oh, the awesome! Whole, the whole time. Yeah, actually, uh, distribute is being used right now at the U.S. Open oh, uh, cool, by man. a wire service to like you know um, get all the photographs out like in pretty speedy. And is this like uh, a, time. A, the test case now? Like, have you have have you this the, is this the first time in a real life situation that you no, used it? No, we, no. I like um, 
I mean, we've had clients pay for it. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, like uh, I would be doing the shooting or someone else would be doing the shooting. And then the software would be like syncing to hardware, like a bunch of screens. Like I think at the White House uh, Correspondence Dinner, we had, um, there were like three photographers roaming, um, shooting like party photos. And then all that was going directly into distribute. And then uh, distribute was pushing like low res into uh, um, a wall of tablets um, that, you know, displayed the party photos like real time, like as people were like walking by. Right. That kind of stuff. I mean, this is, this is all stuff that, um, has been done before, right? Sure. This is not, we're not like revolutionizing stuff. We're just like uh, making the tool as cheap and as easy to use as possible and putting it in the hands of like um, the individual photographer who before, you know, you don't have access to this kind of stuff because you really needed a team right. or like a very specific build out in order to make this kind of stuff happen. Right. It's crazy with technology just how, how easy things are. I mean, it, it was pretty amazing that you were, I saw that you were, well, Stan and I were, were talking you were taking some pictures and you know we got to see them but they're automatically loading up and and just in out and through real quick so tell me a little bit about insider can we talk about that i mean we can talk about it briefly i mean it's just uh you know we insider images yeah it's let's uh, talk about you yeah <laughs> let's talk about you a little bit i know that you don't want to but let's i mean uh, it's uh it's a photo agency that i started um you know maybe five years ago uh we work with a lot of you know freelancers um and we just produce images for brands you know it's sort of um because um, PR companies, marketing people, uh, they sort of realize that, you know, there, there are event photographers, but then there's also a style of shooting, um, especially um, a style of shooting used by uh, photojournalists that makes newspapers right. use the images. And right. they're, they're trying to get um, that placement, quality, right? Yeah, 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 they're trying to get placement into these newspapers. So instead of, um, and of course, you can, everyone can shoot like the grip and grin shot with like the executives sure. and like the celebrity standing in a line, but then there's also like the celebrity doing stuff within an event or something like that, um, that'll, that'll end up looking more organic. And so a newspaper or a website is more likely, um, uh, to use it. I mean, oh, and over the years, it's kind of become that, that business model has become a little bit, uh, weird because the wire services sort of figured it out and then they created arms that right. do pretty much exactly what, what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. Yeah that do uh, this thing, nah, whatever, you know, pe people got to make money. Um, but it's, it's weird because like, because they, they have such a um, strong marketing team and they have such high volume. Now you're basically, you're, you're basically competing with like every other brand that's doing the same exact thing. And it's like all this noise. So there's almost like it's diminishing returns on, uh, on value, uh, for like, you know, posting it onto a wire service. I mean, they'll, they'll argue differently, obviously. Um, but uh, I, I don't think it's as potent as it used to be. Mm -hmm. And so you then basically, you run this, you run the agency, you, get, you end up getting requests, and then you either shoot it yourself or find the particular photographer to, to shoot it. Yeah. Is that how it works? Yeah. Okay, cool. I mean, like we worked with Andrew Kelly, like people, like a, a lot of New York guys, you know, like uh, Keith Bedford. Sure. Um, He's back not in New York when, anymore. Yeah, He's watching when, though. Yeah, back when he was uh, a freelancer, you know, Eric Thayer, you know, really good photojournalist. Yeah. And then um, we, we try to find like a good pair. I mean, you, these guys are not going to do whatever. Right, like, sure, yeah. Like, you know, you, you have to really talk it through. I mean, these, these guys are artists, right? Um, and sort of figure out if it's a good fit. Uh, for what uh, the kinds of photographs they want to produce. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm sure that going, thinking about through your career as you were started as an intern at The Sun and, and started getting freelance gigs and so on, I think you probably quickly found out that, uh, that the real key in making money in the photo world is diversity, obviously. Oh, yeah. And not just in editorial, but really get, get branching out and, sh and shooting commercial advertising and, and so on. Weddings. I mean, uh, weddings, some, bar of the mitzvahs. Best, yeah, oh, yeah. some of the best editorial photographers, you know, they do a bunch of weddings or like they, they help out like Christian Oath, like the Christian Oath wedding studio or whatever. And they, you know, they make a couple grand and that powers like all the storytelling that they do. Uh huh. You know, when you, when you first, um, when we first met, when we were interns, did you have a different idea of where you'd be 10 years from then? than where you are now um what a loaded you know, question yeah it's uh you have to think about it for a second i mean i mean i, I when you're younger i think uh, most photojournalists want to become this like, war chasing like globe trotting type dude you yeah. know wearing a scarf that's way too long <laughs> and you know taking uh, uh making images that matter that change the world you know you you, you want to like make 
Time magazine covers. You know, sure. that, that was um, that was always that image um, or like uh, the promise that they sold you right. on. Um, that's what made the profession kind of sexy. Um, you know, early um, early on in my career, and I'm sure in your career yeah, as well. Sure. Um, and then, but reality hits, right? At, um, especially if you're living in New York City. I mean, the the edit. I mean, magazine jobs don't they don't pay as much anymore, and they're certainly not as uh, common as they used to be. Um, and a lot of like these older guys um, who have been doing uh, that kind of work for the magazines. I mean, a lot of their a lot of their wealth is from buying property yeah. with that magazine money from like you know the '60s and '70s, yeah. and now they can continue doing whatever that they stuff. want. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's hard to break into it right now. I mean, I s- and to uh, answer your question, I certainly thought like maybe there'd be more of a component in my life. Uh, that was about that but you know this this stuff is actually kind of cool also sort of like figuring out like new um technologies um and business models for photographers to make money and then going out and doing it and you know i still travel sure uh, a fair bit um what's your what's your what's your passion in in terms of photography doesn't even necessarily need to be photography but but like if you didn't have to worry about the money that which you're making through whatever means what would it be that you'd be doing i mean the fun stuff is actually just running the operation that's like what's most fun for me interesting i kind of love doing that uh and like you know the the valleys are just as i mean maybe even more fun than the peaks Mm -hmm. uh when you're running a business i mean that's you don't you don't do it really to make money i mean even though you know it it helps yeah you do it because you kind of enjoy the ride right right? and so in the beginning it was kind of about money but now it's sort of like you know like really enjoying just day to day sort of figuring out oh wait we need to make this much money or like you know do this or like introduce introduce like this tech technology to get people right. on board with that stuff and then figuring out how to like solve problems for photographers and for clients right um so like yeah that stuff is really fun cool and we didn't really talk much uh, it's been like an abnormal podcast because normally we start we talk about your background nobody and you're like, is listening to this <laughs> <laughs> but you don't want to talk about yourself so much so um before we met during our internships are you fr- you're from around here aren't you or, or what's yeah lifelong new yorker yeah lifelong new yorker so you mm-hmm. just sort of did did you study photography no i uh, i went to nyu uh for uh journalism which was a very useful degree um <laughs> and uh, i guess there was history in there also i think i double majored i don't really remember anymore um but yeah i i stayed in new york because um i wanted to do something um with journalism and uh and so, you know, sort of stuck around and uh, actually took a good amount of time off in college to intern at the New York Sun. Um, I think I took like a semester or two off just yeah. to like work in the industry because that's, I mean, that's how you get the jobs, yeah. right? Um, just going out and doing it instead of just like studying. Do you, do you think that uh, without the internship, I always talk with people who've done internships and they always seem to, and I kind of agree with what I'm about to say, which is that it really sets you apart because you get sort of a baptism by fire you're just put out in the field you're constantly working you're meeting people if you hadn't have done the internship do you think that you would necessarily be where you are today because of the contacts or did you know like we didn't know each other before your internship maybe we wouldn't have met right you've met a lot of our Mm -hmm. colleagues and so on so how integral would you say the internship was to your career i mean if you can get one (laughs) and you can get it to pay you i mean obviously you know go for it it's a great opportunity um, I mean, I think I love what the Times does with its intern program, and I, they've only expanded it, right, since you, well, you were I, there. Yeah, I was actually, I think the last time, I was the f- last single photo intern. I think ever since, they've brought on two interns. Maybe I wonder so, if they split the, the pay between them. I no, wonder. sometimes it's three, right, because they have a guy, like, in D.C. now, right? And then Oh, that's true, yeah, I, they have I know a D- like, D.C. person. I know, like, last year or maybe two years ago, it was, like, Swift and Kozlarich. And like in New York, right? right so they yeah. had two in New York, and but two like, stellar photographers yeah. in New York. Um, but they they also don't they kind of overlap with the video department also? Like they're kind of working on like different kinds of multimedia, so it it kind of makes that's sense, the, that's right? The big difference since when I was at the New York Times and now is the technology and and how you know there's video involved, there's multimedia involved. I mean, it's amazing what what's being produced compared to. I remember doing multimedia in air quotes right um, back in the day on a, on a project and it was you know a slideshow set to you know me trying to read off of a script or something like right. that and it was poorly faded and it was tiny and just you know and it was flash and you can't even search my name and find that project anymore online and nowadays it's just full full bleed pages uh, 
and I don't know. They've just got all this technology going on. I mean, it, the Times is like obviously uh, they're they're the pioneers in all of this. I mean, uh, I, you remember when uh, Snowfall that Snowfall article dropped? It was Snow- a couple. It, it was a couple of uh, uh, years ago at this point, but it um, and they won rightfully. They won a whole bunch of awards for it. They might have even won a Pulitzer for it. I don't, I don't remember. Um, but you know, uh, it was crazy at the time because you loaded it up and it was just stuff flying in from like. All all over the page, right? Like, uh-huh. um, and there would be sort of like parallax scrolling. You know, text would be going up, and then the uh, the background would be like locked into place. Right. And then they had video, and then they had uh, they had like animations of like, oh yeah, look, this is how the avalanche happened. Oh uh, right, right, yeah, yeah, the avalanche, yeah, right. yeah okay, of yeah, course. Remember sure. You remember that? Yeah. And so, and nowadays they they snowfall like so like you know they, they, for a while it was called snow falling an article right. uh, by like loading it up with as much multimedia as possible, like you know, uh, flooding the zone as the Times is very famous for doing. There was um, also a really incredible, uh, just the other day, or I think it's probably still on the website, I'd pull it up, but I probably won't find it right away, um, of, uh, and it wasn't even a photographer, it was a, a writer in Libya, and they just basically used his photos and his iPhone videos and stuff and turned it into this hugely immersive you know, we drove from here to here, and they put maps and multi. It was it was insane. I mean, and that was with not a pro photographer. Right. So I mean, it's just interesting with the capabilities of technology these days. How you can tell a story even if you don't have the best of the best visuals. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, Apple. I mean, did you watch that recent Apple um, Worldwide Developers Conference yeah. announcement? That they, they have it in their phone now, um, where they just sort of like. Um, where they take your videos, photos and videos from yeah. like one day or like a weekend and then they aggregate, like they make some photos that, you know, that they think right. you like better, bigger. And then like, you know, it starts playing the videos and then throws a map of like Lake Tahoe up there or whatever. And like, you know, that they, they're basically snow falling their, snow uh, falling their, the their iPhone, photo yeah. album, you know, which is, I mean, and people love themselves. So. You know, it's perfect. So, what do we what do we feel breaking from all of this? What do, what do we feel about the uh, state of the photography world these days? Do you? I, I mean, it's we. Good. It's good. It's strong. Strong. <laughs> <laughs> it's very strong. Um, I mean, obviously, there's we had we hit on McCurry a little bit. We've got we got some scandal brewing there. I guess you could say. Oh, there is. You don't think you don't yeah, think it's any big deal. Scapegoating the guy, you know, it's a it's it's a, it's a distraction, you know. It's an interesting thing because uh, you know the people that are so upset are the the journalists, the photojournalists, the people that do the work where they don't aren't allowed to do these types of things. Right. Most of the world, technically, I mean, doesn't care that much, I guess. Photojournalists like getting like overly righteous about this sort of stuff. Meanwhile, like you know, the, you know, you have giant wire service eating your eating your cake from under you you know it's like uh like you have other things to worry about guys you know like stop turning on a fellow photojournalist i mean he um like some of the, some of those edits i'm visual more storyteller than, yeah he's a visual storyteller a and b like that kind of stuff was not uncommon you know sure. um i mean people don't like to talk about it but right. uh that kind of stuff happened all the time and especially with magazine editing um People like they they were like filling in parts of photographs in order to like fit the page, yeah, fit the page stuff, like yeah. that kind of stuff. And also like photojournalism um, by itself or or any sort of photography, you're you're kind of the gatekeeper anyway, right? You right. what you decide to like keep in the frame or whatever. So all of that is just like it, it's such a, it's such a gray area that like and I think it's because Steve is like so successful and he has had such a legendary career that people go like people like watching their heroes fall. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like if we didn't have social media, it wouldn't be as big of a deal like it was right. back in the day. I mean, I mean, it, it wasn't back in the day as big of a deal if someone got busted for this, that, or the other. Right. But now it's like, well, you you look back like for instance, uh, L.A. Times. Who was it got fired for doing something, distorting something from Iraq or something like that? I forget his name. And you know. Facebook wasn't as huge back then. I remember seeing on sports shooter message boards and things like that. And he got fired and moved on, whatever. But now it's like, it's almost worse to be vilified and be a trending topic on social media than it is to just get your slap on the wrist and and move on or whatever. It's like, and it can be vicious too. I mean, there are people that are really, really just like calling me like an evil person. Right. For Well, these people are not working, you know? So like, what else are they going to do? Yeah. You know? sit on the internet and complain about a guy who's had a great career. Right? Well, when you when you hear that he's making 
hundreds of thousands of dollars on selling his prints. He just had a he's had a pretty awful year. He had a, some assistant or something uh, steal his his prints or something, and she just went to jail. Did you hear about that? No. Oh my God. Crazy. I'll send you the link. <laughs> <laughs> I'll Facebook it to you. But anyways, he's you know, it just it just goes to show that that. Also, you know, you look at guys like him who are selling his prints and making many, many, many thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on, on resales, how important it is to own your own work and, and uh, realize that, you know, there's value to all of that and there's a business in it. Right. So. I mean, and I mean, guys like him and you look at um, a lot of other photographers like that, it, it goes to show that there is a market out there and you can make a, a lot of money doing photography. Um, it's just that because of consolidation of like say the wires and like other companies, other agencies, maybe a lot of that wealth is now concentrated in places where before it was sort of spread out among a lot of photographers. And also you have a lot more people trying to get into the space now, right? It's, right. Um, uh, digital has really democratized the heck out of professional photography. And so you have both those things have um, made it seem like the sky is falling on the photo industry right but i mean there's still a lot of opportunity out there i mean there's i mean someone is making money right sure there are plenty sure. of people making money so y you have to really ask yourself like why is it not you if you're not um one of right. those people so maybe what we can sort of end this on is sort of it's some advice that you can give to you know both you and i met as interns getting into the field young pups to, we're to old now man. we're old now <laughs> so what would you say to the, the youngsters following in our footsteps who are just getting an internship or just thinking, oh, I want to get to New York City and become a photographer. Like, what bit of advice would you say can lead them to success in this age of technology and social media? And I mean, you, you really have to, you have to make it your life. Like, I, I, I was talking to uh, Spencer, or, you know, we, we were shooting something with Spencer Platt the other day, mm -hmm. and he was sort of comp harping on some of the younger kids you know, like they, they do, like the younger photographers uh, who are in the industry now, they, they do a, a whole variety of things, right? Um, whereas he remembered when he was younger, it was like photojournalism, like, you know, he lived it, right? Right. Ate it, breathe it, you know, go to sleep, like dreaming about photojournalism. And so I think um, you just got to put in the time, you know, it, it, it doesn't like, you know, you might get lucky and it'll happen overnight. You'll shoot uh, like an amazing image for like an, right. a, an incredible story and you end up being promoted uh but you know you just keep grinding away and well there's two parts there's i mean there's the technical like you kind of have to be at the top of your game technically to be able to take the images whatever there's a lot of amazing photographers that are just not making a dime and are shitty business people right um but you have to have that savvy right you have to have that sort well, of on like the, on the business side i mean the, i mean the business side you can be helped though right there are there are ways you can become a better marketer right you, i mean go go get a mailchimp account and like send out email blasts you know i i, I tell people this all the time um you you have if you have clips or whatever you like remind your clients that like you are doing these cool things um i, th I think that's that's extremely important i mean uh, we're just talking about photojournalism now right we're not talking right, about right um all the other weird stuff that you could do. I mean, you, you can work on stuff on the side, but you know that that goes against um, what we were talking about earlier, where you have to really go, you have to go all in on photojournalism because it is a struggle, and you really have to enjoy the ride, right? So don't think that it's it's just gonna happen. Everything's just gonna happen for you overnight, or you know, think that like, oh yeah, this is the one goal, right? right that I need to hit. I need to be like a Time Magazine cover photographer, you right. know, traveling the world. You know, in, enjoy all the other like small steps that yeah. will, uh, will, that will lead you there, and then you'll get there. You know? And then there's the community, meeting meeting people. You and I see each other out at poker or at different events and stuff. I mean, yeah, there's a great websites like photobrigade.com. I've heard of it. Yeah, it's gr uh, and you know, I mean, you're do, you're doing great work. You're you're building a community, and people can kind of support each other, or you know, get together and uh, you know complain about steve mccurry yeah um, heck yeah yeah so. steve <laughs> <laughs> all right gary well i'm what i'm going to do is i'm going to end up getting some photos from you and i'm going to splice these in in post-production so that we, people can see some of your you know really high-end non-instagram work oh yeah and also i mean why, why don't we jump oh, yeah. over yeah oh to, yeah why don't we show uh, some of this sorry uh what's distribute? the other link nah, go to explorers yeah so if you want to if you want to play with distribute and you have like a wi-fi enabled camera uh we have this explorers program um, 
set up. Uh, so it's free, completely free, for like three to six months. And uh, yeah, you get to play with it and charge whatever the heck you want for it uh, to your clients and uh, just uh, so, use oh, so, it. So, so basically what you're going to do is eventually is people will end up paying a fee of some sort to be part of this and then they can turn around and charge people for it charge yeah, people for it. i mean it's just it's just a soft piece of software you know sitting on the internet doing all the work for you uh -huh. um so and you know it, it'll so uh, it's very it's kind of bare bones right now but it it's we've charged hundreds of dollars um uh and s sometimes thousands of dollars to clients uh for uh real-time uh delivery of the photographs that's interesting i've got With, I've without got a without like, you know, looking down at your phone, um, like editing photographs and then sending it out. You know, this stuff just hits, you know, you just tag or you just have the entire pipe go directly to the cloud. And then some and does guy it go through your phone or just the network, just a Wi-Fi network, basically? I mean, your phone can be a Wi-Fi network. Right. I mean, you can go through, uh, you can hardline it, anything. Um, you know, we're working on hardware also, but, you know, that, wait, wait, wait for that. Um, but this, I mean, even this for very, at this very early stage, you can charge a good amount of money to deliver photographs in real time. So we want to kind of want to already get it out there and see what people can do with it. Um, I'm doing the house photography for the international Emmys in November, and I'm going to pitch this. I think it would be perfect for that. They have asked me about stuff. They have? Oh, yeah. perfect. So we'll talk. Well, you'll talk to me, and then I'll upcharge it. No, yeah. just kidding. Exactly. <laughs> no, I, I'm more than happy to help you guys make more money. I mean, that's the, that's the whole point, yeah. right? Like, let's, let's get um, – let's – up the technology game of like every single photographer out there so they can start competing with like some of these uh, more consolidated agencies that have more resources and that are, you know, maybe they're taking clients away, who knows? Yeah, you know, yeah. Fight back. Awesome, well that's it, distributeapp.com if you wanna get involved. Uh, distributeapp.com slash explorers. Slash explorers. If you want to just get some free software and like play with it, tell me how much it sucks, you know, make extra money by charging your clients, do whatever you want. Right, and uh, you can see uh, Gary's Instagram and all his social media at Gary He. I imagine on yeah, pretty on much those every things. pretty much every account is at Gary He. Awesome. Well, Gary, thank you, thank you for wearing the tie or the bow tie, and uh, we'll see you next month. Right, we're gonna do this monthly. Yeah, like whenever there's a new feature, I'm just gonna come up. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming, and we'll see you again next time. Adios.